Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it And Now the Fed, because the Fed meeting is this week, March 15th and 16th, and everybody's waiting for the first interest rate. What are they going to do about the, uh, the balance sheet and how are they going to uh, work that off? And is the interest rate going to be a quarter point, half point? We'll see. But it's now time for the Fed to act. So we've got Ukraine, we've got the war in Europe going on, and now the Fed and everybody's been waiting on this and the anticipation for it. So we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ composite uh, today, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. Uh, a couple of indicators, take a look at the interest rate sector, look at um, XLK and the SOX uh, index, and two uh, semiconductor stocks, AMD and Micron Technology. So let's start off here with the, uh, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ composite weekly charts. Side by side, everything was down this week. Uh, pretty negative picture, very negative close in the afternoon on Friday. The uh, Dow was down to, let's see, 671 points for the week. Uh, the S&P down 124 and the NASDAQ composite down 286. So the Dow has been down for five weeks in a row, although that three weeks ago, he was just barely down. And that was a week when the S&P and the NASDAQ both uh, rallied. So those two have been down for two weeks in a row. So we'll see where we go from here. Let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ composite. Here is the uh, what I call my moving average view, just kind of has most of my traditional indicators and things like that on the, on the chart. You can see we're trending down. Here's the key low of January 24th and February 24th. Now you notice we have not taken out the February 24th low just yet, but I'm gonna show you a couple other things that have, and it makes me really believe that we are about to. Now, here is the Elliott Wave picture I've got on the NASDAQ composite. I've got it that wave five, looking for five waves down and uh, this fifth wave I don't think is finished here. That is an alternate count I've got that it's possible that the fifth wave ended here, but I just don't think it has. And when we come down, which we're getting very, very close, it looks like we got a beautiful swing setup coming up in here and almost like a, an inverse cup and handle type move. And we, we break down below this low, which is 12,587.88. And this goes away. And then we're going to continue on down. Now, this third wave down here, that is where a normal length third wave will end as a part of this fifth wave. So what are we doing? It looks like the fifth wave to me is extending. It's like we're getting a nice extended move here. It's always possible that we could morph into some kind of ending diagonal pattern with zigzags. But right now, I'm assuming we're going to keep thrusting to the downside uh, like we've got it in here. Now, let's take a look at the cues. Very similar setup. It's the exact same thing. Now, I am showing, uh, you know, a little channel type action that we've got uh, connecting from wave two, projecting from wave three. I do think this last move down is going to break down below this. And, you know, there's a big gap right here. It's not big, but it is a clear gap down in the uh, upper 270s on the queues that is going to be begging to get closed. And if I, you know, if I look at a you know, Fibonacci projections down here for wave three, a normal length wave three is going to be down here around 272 if we continue to thrust down in an impulse manner like this. That is going to be the key. If we continue to thrust down like this, then this is what I'm looking at. Now, where is that? Where is that big uh, picture? Then let me just zoom out a little bit. Where is the gap? It's back over here. It was created in November 2020. So that's what I'm looking at as a possibility for closing. Uh, we'll see if we get it. Okay, so that is the picture there with the cues. I'm just trying to see if there's something else I want to mention about that. Um, let's take a look at the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average. And I'm going to look at the NASDAQ since we're focused on the NASDAQ. And let me go right here. So let me back off. So I've talked about, I think I showed this once before in another earlier video. But we're down here at 
36% when you round it. So 36% of the stocks on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange are above their 200-day moving average. That's it. But I'm really looking for more of a washout down into this area below 30, and we just haven't gotten it yet. We really, it's just, you know, we're not seeing it on any of the indicators, really. We haven't seen any kind of capitulation, any kind of real uh, fear selling, that type of thing. So we'll see what we get. Let's take a look at the interest rate sector. Now, the interesting thing about a high yield bond fund, HYG, look at this. Now, I just showed you, let me go back to the cues. I just showed you where... Uh, January 24th, right here, and February 24th, right here. And the same thing on the NASDAQ composite, right? Same, same kind of picture, same kind of thing. This is a little more compressed. Let me just move it out. Okay. Well, where was the high yield bond fund on January 24th? Right here. And they've left that in the dust a long time ago. Now, here's the February 24th low. And we've already closed below that for one, two, three, four out of the last five days and coming down hard. And, and when you take a look at the, the weekly view in here, I mean, we're, we're, it almost looks like we're in free fall type mode. I've got this bar up here. Let me zoom out. I've got this line across the top up here because that's the pre-pandemic highs that were occurring right in here. January and, and February of 2020, we haven't even, we it never took them out to the upside, you know, uh, and, and so it never confirmed what was going on in the marketplace and the indices. And now we've rolled over, broke down, you know, pretty hard right now, and looks like we're in kind of free fall mode. Okay, so that is the picture. And every time you get a little bounce, it doesn't seem to last two or three days, one day. Uh, that really seems to be all we're getting right now. And so then what's happening, this is the high yield uh, bond fund, the high yield impact. I know people are showing charts of the, uh, the corporate high yield bonds too, and they're a mess, and they're signaling the same kind of thing. So where are we with the 10-year yield? Let's take a look at that. And here's the daily view. We're sitting at 2.00% at the close on Friday. But let's look at the weekly view, and it's kind of interesting. Um, and I know I've shown this before. We're above this. I had this as a like a resistance zone. Well, we got above it, and then we pulled back in it for one week, and then here we are, snap back right back above it again, closed well above last week's, the prior week's high. And this is the highest close since all the way over here into, uh, I think it's right here, the highest close since right here, highest weekly close since the week of July 21st, 2019. So about two and a half years. So we got above here in terms of, you know, the highest, the highest close of this year. And then now it looks like it wants to keep pushing. It'll be inter interesting to see where it goes. And then this is all I've got on TNX, the 10 year yield. This is the, the whole picture. But it shows it back from 2000, 2007, the peak in uh, 2018, and then where we're at now. Okay, so uh, a big downtrend, and we'll see how, mo how long it takes to get up here to the trend line, and then what do we do? What are, where do we go after we get there? So that was the high yield bond fund, the 10-year yield. Let's take a look at uh, XLK and the semiconductor index. Okay, here is XLK, weekly chart. This looks like a big head and shoulders top to me. And we've got a neckline right here, and we closed down below that neckline for the first time. That's, uh, that's a pretty negative looking picture. Uh, you know, we'll see how long we want to, it takes to break, continue to break on down, but it looks to me like the top is in. And when you look at the daily charts over here, Again, here's the January low, here's the February low. We haven't closed below those lows yet on a daily basis, but I think we're gonna get close. Let's take a look at the, um, the SOX. I'm gonna look at the SOX index. I know the, the SMH ETF is very similar, about the same. When you look at the weekly view, 
it's right at the neckline. So it's doing a, a similar type thing. Let me kind of see if I can adjust this a little bit. Now nah, that doesn't help me. Here's what I want to do. And we've had such a big range in here. That's why I'm keeping it on semi-log. But here's what I'm looking at. This shoulder. And that shoulder right in here in this neckline. We're closing right at the neckline. So we don't have as dramatic a, a close down below it as we just saw on XLK. But when you come over here and take a look at the daily chart, the thing that jumped out at me on the daily chart is, look how, here's the, this is January 28th, here's 24th, and here's the 28th, and here's February 24th. We closed down below that. Uh, Monday, I guess it was, right? And then we snapped back, and then now here we are, you know, coming back down again. We closed below Thursday's low here on the SOX index. So we've taken out these, these key lows, which to me, the combination you see in this kind of breakdown in the semiconductors, you're seeing what's happening with the high yield bond fund, uh, and, you know, a lot of negativity there. Uh, and I just don't think that the... Um, the NASDAQ uh, lows are going to hold, uh, like the, the uh, 24th on both months. They're just not going to hold. I think we're going to get a lot more movement to the downside. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the um, semiconductor stocks. Let's take a look at AMD. I mean, here we have the uh, the daily view. Let me just focus on the weekly view. So, you now it's, it's very similar to the SOX index. We're getting a little head and shoulders pattern in here. We're coming right on back down to the neckline. Same kind of thing. We get a close below that neckline, and it's a pretty strong indication that the top is in. And you'll see if you continue to get the follow through down to the downside. And uh, when you look at MU, MU has a little bit different top, a little bit different type picture going on. MU, Micron Technology, is more of a double top scenario to me. When I look at this, let's zoom out. This is a weekly view. You look at this, we're talking about a big double top in here. And what is it doing? Look how it, it broke down through this trend line this last week. And um, you know, right here, and th that was on Monday. It just shattered it on Monday in terms of breaking down below that trend line, snaps back up to the trend line, and then comes back down again and closes on the low, almost exactly on the low of the week the day on Friday and the week. And in the process, it looks pretty close to breaking this longer term trend line from the low of March of 2020. OK, so we're talking about the entire rally from the bottom in March of 2020. This whole trend line right here on a weekly basis, it looks like we're breaking below that trend line. That's uh, that's pretty negative. So we'll see what kind of uh, continuation, what kind of move we get out of these now. We'll see what kind of reaction we get to the Fed this coming week. Uh, the volatility and, uh, and the moves to the downside, I believe, are going to continue. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button there. And if you'd like more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net, check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. It's going to be interesting. Talk to you on the next video.